Our next guests are joining us from their home in New York City. Please welcome Bye. our friends, Remy Ma and Papoose. No. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Where are you guys? Oh, there they are. Oh, there they go. That's right. <laughs> where are you? That's <laughs> great. Up. Welcome, you two. Okay, now you have been taking quarantine very serious. And you barely left your apartment in a month. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, a little bit over a month. How's it been going, spending literally all of your time together? Um, It's cool because we get to spend time together. She's <laughs> so big, Rem. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Guys, cute. we were holding her when she was, like, this big. She was the last time you guys saw her, she was two months old. She's now 16 months. Oh, I love it. And you guys, so you guys have been spending all your time together and you're loving it. Is there any weird moments? No, I personally, I am thoroughly enjoying this quarantine. Um, I don't have nowhere to be. No one else has anywhere to be. Like I didn't organize my closet, color coordinated yep. underwear. Underwire bras over here, non underwire. <laughs> yes, over here. Like, I love I'm it. Just, like doing everything, but it's also giving me a chance to get super domesticated. I'm talking like breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. I just yeah. want him to know, and I'm glad that we're doing this because I want this to be on the record somewhere that after this quarantine, that this is not happening. Like it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts. Right. Uh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. She's been making some amazing meals. So it's like a blessing in disguise, even though it's a tragedy across the planet, but it's definitely some good coming out of it, spending quality time with the family. Oh my God. Well, I'm on your guys' right. same vibes. Okay, so Papoose, you guys have always been mad tight. Like we can tell you guys are like locked, right? Is there anything during this quarantine though that you learned about Remy that you didn't know before? Yeah, one of the things that I, I did learn, you know, I hate to sound so greedy, I knew she was a good cook, but I learned that she's a great cook. But the simple fact that, coincidentally, I turned vegan right before this happened, and I was really struggling just going into different re vegan restaurants, and some of them were good, some of them were horrible. Mm -hmm. But now that we've been stuck at home, she's actually been cooking some re really great vegan meals, you know? And she's not vegan, so it's hard living with a person who's not vegan when you're vegan, but she's actually stepped up her cooking game on the vegan level. Remy, wow. I feel for you. Wow, that's major. Because Jay is also a vegan. You would cook. It don't matter what you working with. Like you yeah. could just finesse it because you really know how to cook. Like he doesn't yeah. understand the dynamics of being able to cook. <laughs> Some people, you know, they know how to make certain things or whatever. But if you know how to cook, you could just finesse it no matter what you make it. Right, right. <laughs> In addition to just cooking, you're also known as Remy Martha. Now, has Remy Martha been uh, making appearances <laughs> during quarantine? Um, Remy Ma is on vacation, and Remy Martha is running quarantine. I'm in here arts and crafting my little heart out. Every, you know, little thing I could think of, because we have a one-year-old. As you see, she's very active. And... Um, they get bored after a while. So you have to do things to keep them entertained. I don't want her, like, she's not been outside. She hasn't been around any other kids. And she might get tired of us two old people in here with her all the time. So I've been trying to think of things <laughs> to keep her entertained and little games that I make about, I be hiding snacks and stuff inside the pots and pans when I'm cooking. So while she's playing in my pots and pans, she'll find something. Like, just little, anything that I can, like, think of that, that will help. First, before I ask my question, I want to say that quarantine is doing amazing things for your skin. You're glowing. You're giving us Thank a you. glow. Thank you. There's that. So just a few weeks ago, you got to experience something that very few of us ever will. What? What was that? Oh, yeah. You're talking about the um, Jeopardy question? Yes. <laughs> I'm at What is when you were on Jeopardy? Yes. So uh, first of all, anybody that knows me knows that that is my favorite show. <laughs> Ever when I first met him, I used to be on the road a lot, so I would record it and when I get home, just run through all the episodes that I missed. And I'd be sitting there watching, and he'd be like, Oh, you've seen this episode before. That that's how you know the answer. I'm like, bruh, Jeopardy doesn't do me much. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so he eventually, for being with me, he realized that I'm kind of know the answers. And he said, Tom, you should go on that show. And one day I'm sitting here and I'm watching my pre-recorded episodes that I missed, and it was like, and now uh, 
Papoose bought this for Remy. Oh, where's my Jimmy <laughs> Hay? We like lost my whole entire mind. It was just so yes. crazy. I was so hyped. Yeah, it was a moment. That's so dope. <laughs> so, I heard that you got Remy a car. Yeah, was, uh, actually, when she actually gave birth that to- That was the question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to know what car did I get <laughs> as a push present. Right, right. And they mentioned oh. at the time she had the baby, so that was my gift to her for giving birth to our child. But I feel like the celebration of the Jeopardy question and, you know, the mention our car, it's only right that we get the new one that comes well, out in let September. Let me ask you guys this. <laughs> I'm just saying. Since the gift was due to the fact that she gave birth to our child, Shouldn't we have the next child so we can get the next truck? Oh, nice. It's the perfect time. I mean, we're, out of, we're out of quarantine present. Like, no, mathematically, we out, I can't we have push it. out of the time. apartment. Well, she's pregnant, at least. It'd be good enough. You know what? Because we actually we did in vitro, <laughs> so we, have, we actually have a boy waiting because we, we did in vitro. Yeah. So uh -huh. It's just a matter of when she's ready to do it. You know, I'm excited. Yeah. She needs a sibling, you know? Yeah. You said earlier you guys were staying in New York City, um, which we know has been hit really, really hard. Um, oh. Do you have any thoughts about leaving the city? I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. When it first, like, first, like, started getting really serious, we were wondering, <laughs> should we stay here or should we go to a house? We have a home in North Carolina. And... It seemed like, you know, it was an option then, but then it started getting so bad that we were scared to even leave out with the baby. Like, we're going to have to stop the gas. And we're going to have to stop the pool because we definitely weren't getting on a plane. And then I'm like, then what if by chance one of us gets sick? Would we rather be in a small town in North Carolina or we want to be in New York City where they have all the resources? So... You know, we just thugged it out. We're like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna stay home. All her stuff is here. All our stuff is here, and we just made it so that everything that we need is here. But if it continues like this for uh, an extended period of time, right? We we we, we might go. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, safety is first. And initially, when this first when the disease first started spreading, they were saying that it wouldn't be smart to relocate to another city because their numbers were actually going to catch up to New York's. That never happened. You know what I'm saying? So if this continues to get worse, for the sake of our child and ourselves, we're going to have to, you know, consider at least going to stay down in our house down in North Carolina. Do you know anyone who has gotten sick? Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people that we know. People. You know, people. I have, I have one of my friends lost both of her parents within oh. 10 days. Um, no. Yeah, that actually, he, he passed away. And it wasn't... It wasn't, hold on, mama. It wasn't because of, he didn't have corona, but the hospitals, their main focus is anybody with COVID. So if you have anything else, you just sit, you're just sat to the side. And by the time they got to him, he had passed away. So he was, he was, hold on. I know what she wants. She wants to eat. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I cry when I'm hungry too. <laughs> also, uh, unfortunately, um, oh, unfortunately, um, one of my cousins actually passed away to coronavirus. She actually passed away from it. Um, you know, my uncle oh my passed gosh. away. Yeah, my uncle passed away. Like my wife was saying, you know, he actually had another condition, but he wasn't feeling well. Went to the emergency room. Long story short. You know, the hospitals are so focused on COVID-19 that people who have other issues, they're not, they're not really catering to them, you know? So it was kind of a neglect thing, but you know, you can't, you can't really question God's plans. You know, we, we stand strong about it. Um, I got tons of friends, tons of friends and people I know who actually have coronavirus. So it's rampant. It's, it's rampant. It, it's definitely hit home. Yes. Mm. Very. Remy, you've, um. You've been vocal about the disproportionate number of African Americans who have, you know, been suffering at the hands of COVID. Is there anything you want to well, say about that? If, if you look at the the logistics, they're saying, you know, mostly African American, Latino, you know, the Black and Brown community are they have a higher mortality rate, but the 
underlying causes of COVID after, you know, it's, obviously it's lung or respiratory issues, but if you have any pre-existing conditions, that's what really exacerbates it. And a lot of people in the African-American Latino community to begin with don't have good health care, yeah. don't have a, um, what's the, a, a doctor, their, their primary caregiver. Primary care. mm-hmm. people, yeah. don't be ha- people don't have primary caregivers. They don't have, they don't even have the, the sense of going to the doctor. I know so many people that walk around with toothaches, headaches, stomach pains, until it's the actual point to where they can't take it anymore before they even go to a hospital because they can't afford it. They don't have health care to begin with. So a lot of times when people of our community and our culture, they, they're walking around unhealthy to begin with. So when something like this happens, it's just like, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. So it's, it's not a coincidence that our community was hit the hardest to begin with. We had bad health care and we have, you know, and women, period, black women. Oh, they don't even take our, our pain seriously. We're the most misdiagnosed and undiagnosed out of all the genres in, in sex. I think I think the neglect to the black and Latino communities have a lot to do with it. Um, you know, the testing locations were set up in places like New Rochelle immediately, which is the richest county in New York City. You know what I'm saying? So now they're starting to, you're starting to see testing sites in black and Latino communities. But initially from the start, we didn't even know where to get tested, and then they drive through testing. And the test is like everyone the doesn't drive everyone doesn't have a vehicle. So yeah. right. you know, I feel like the, the, the poor people were That's kinda left to die. Yeah, that's part of the reason why so many of us are passing away. And a lot of um, people from our communities are the now essential workers, the people who drive the trains and the buses and car services and who work in restaurants and grocery stores. So they had direct contact to so many people yeah. because of their profession as well. We just got to stay safe and take care of our loved ones. That's right. Yeah. So we appreciate you for coming, too. Yeah, thank, thank you for you sharing a moment of your family with us. Thank you, baby. You <laughs> thank you. So happy to see your faces and to see the baby. Yeah, we love you guys, and we're praying over all your family and your health out there. Okay, you guys take care of each other. Yes, and thanks to you guys thank for, for the show in this tough time. God bless. Absolutely.